It looks like these were slap bang in line with the expectations. I think the Reuters consensus was for 5.1%, Bloomberg consensus for 5.2%. So we've got we've got um, Reuters consen consensus correct this time. So no big surprises with inflation. It is coming down as you would have expected it to. Yes, no big surprises at all. We were expecting 5.2% uh, year on year. I think broadly what you're seeing is a very strong disinflationary trend overall for CPI, but it's particularly um, concentrated within the goods price uh, index, which has come down from 4.6% last month to around 4% this month. Uh, another trend that we're seeing is that unfortunately the services component uh, seems to be uh, very sticky downward. Within the goods components, I think one of the key drivers of the disinflationary trend is food prices. Um, food and non-alcoholic beverages now heading towards only 1% year on year, and we expect that trend to continue given the fact that uh, if you look at soft commodity prices, particularly maize, it's sitting at about a thousand rands per ton coming from over 2,000 rands per ton 18 months ago, and that's going to feed through in the in the whole food value chain. Just looking at the services inflation, and that's something we have discussed previously because it has been sticky, to what extent do you think it's being held where it is by the World Cup with people not passing through any disinflationary trends, trying to keep prices where they are ahead of the World Cup, and do you think it could come down afterwards? Well, possibly because um, it's it's in the houses and utilities component, but I also don't think it's only it's only that. It's also um, particularly true to these public sector uh, uh, price uh, increments because if you look at some of the big um, services components, it's that, it's that houses and utilities uh, components, which includes uh, water and it includes um, electricity and some of these administrative prices and if you look at these administered prices particularly regulated in other words government administered prices you're finding that you know they're growing well above the CPI target range in fact more than 10 percent year on year so I mean I, I wouldn't blame people um, too soon about not passing on World Cup uh, related um, uh, disinflation reprisal. And of course just on those ESCOM price hikes look th those really still have to come through I know from Joburg's perspective those increases only come through in June so this is going to hit services inflation going forward isn't it? It will, although now the Reserve Bank is obviously a, a lot less worried uh, about them. The problem is it's going to have an inflationary impact, but it's also going to be an implicit tax, as the SAR puts it, which puts uh, somewhat overstretched uh, consumer under more strain, which could, you know, one could make the argument that that just leads to an even slower recovery in consumer spending bigger output gaps and, and a more benign um, than otherwise would be demand um, pull inflation going forward. So the jury is still, is still out there. The Reserve Bank seems to be less worried about that um, than it was previously. Of course, while it's nice that we have the, the year on year increases coming down quite nicely, so 5.1%, the month on month rate is starting to accelerate. It's gone from 0.6% in February to 0.8% in March. At what point do you think inflation is going to turn again? So where will we reach within the targets and when will we start trending upwards again? I think we start bottoming in the in the second half of this year towards the, 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 the fourth quarter when we start seeing um, this goods price um, inflation start to bottom and start to increase. It's also coming through in the PPI, which has also started to bottom and is now on, on, on an upward trend. But I think overall for this year and for next year, CPI should be well within the, uh, the target band, but possibly starting an upward trend um, from, from the fourth quarter of, of, of this year. Of course, we had the, the Reserve Bank Governor Jill Marcus speaking last week at the BER conference in Santon and really pouring cold water on hopes of another interest rate cut. And of course, those had been building since those really dismal retail sales figures we got a couple of weeks ago, which was a 1.5% contraction. Do you think, given the benign inflation environment, that there is still a chance for an interest rate cut this year? Or do you think that the Reserve Bank would do well to, to keep interest rates flat for as long as possible? Look, I recall arguing for flat rates last time and uh, uh, feeling very embarrassed after, after I think the surprise. I think <laughs> most, most economists were. After the surprise cut. But uh, we, we think that if rates um, are cut once again, it will be because growth is uh, or disappoints more than than what is is expected. We're seeing um, the Reserve Bank has said that they are now more comfortable with it, with, with inflation. In fact, they've even changed the electricity price assumption from 25% to 20%, which has led to a, some, uh, uh, an improvement in the in the inflation outlook. Their inflation trajectory bottoming at 4.9% in the third quarter. What they then said was that even though the economy improved slightly in the fourth quarter and the early parts of this year. That growth is on government and export crutches firstly and that domestic 
domestic demand is very weak. In other words, it's, it, they're not satisfied with the recovery in, in, in domestic demand. Any further cuts, I think, are highly unlikely and would be based on that growth being worse than what we, we expect. We expect it uh, to, to, to be moderate and a, and, and a gradual recovery. And when, when would you expect the consumer to actually take the baton from government and from infrastructure spending and to start coming through with demand, which will help boost growth? Look, we think because we're starting to see the fundamental drivers of consumer spending to begin um, uh, improving. So we're seeing the labor market begin to improve. Interest rates are the lowest since um, 1981. Inflation, the cost of living, is also um, seeing a, a strong deflationary trend. Consumer confidence is, is also now aging up. So we think as 2010 progresses and as 2011 comes, um, or as we enter 2011, we should start seeing some sort of sector rotation away from exports and government, because the government will have to reduce uh, its intervention in the economy to render the finances more sustainable. And we should start seeing consumer spending uh, kick in, and which will then lead to a, a, an improvement in, in, in private sector fixed investment. So that's sort of broadly our, our central expectations.